Yeah, a very big welcome to you, my dear Cancer. And of course, a big welcome to those who felt like that this constellation has an inspiration for them as well. When I look into uh, the moon, I see the constellation Cancer behind it. And when I look at the sun, I see the constellation Virgo behind it. Now, I read two ways. I read from right to left, which is the wobble the Earth does uh, of like around 25,800 years. If you divide that through the 12 zodiac signs, then you get an age. We are right now in the age of Pisces that is ending and the length of an age is around 2150 years. So then I read from right to left. Now if I read the other way from left to right, that is how the earth is spinning around the sun in 365 days divided through 12 is a month. And so here, when we read from left to right, we see that Virgo is waiting for you. Virgo is holding the sun for you. And if I put Virgo here, we can see that Virgo is ahead of you. Virgo is has done the movement from you to Leo and then into Virgo. So you have one step in between to arrive at the mountain again where Virgo is holding the light for those who come up again. So the yoga position that I choose for Virgo is mountain pose. She's up again or he's up again, up in the mountain and past and future are looking at each other and the present is born every moment in this cosmic egg. For you I choose Ashra Sanchalan Asana, of course, the horse pose. And yeah, you are looking at the dark and the light side, the masculine and the feminine side. You are using the dualities to achieve what you want to achieve in the chariot. And the faces create the cup and here in the center is the energy of what we want to bring ourselves in, right? The court card that is uh, connected with you is the Queen of Cups. If your birthday is between June 10th and July 12th, this is the court card when it comes up in the reading. The last reading where you had a second reading, the Sun in Leo. Are you controlling or protecting the four times seven portal of spiritual consciousness? You had the tower, you had the seven of coins, and then you had you. So let's begin with the first card, which is on the position of the fool, the ace of cups. You are wanting to love, and it's very interesting because you are the person that is guarding the cup the Holy Grail with two angels and you are really looking at it and you're really taking it serious and you're really a very sensitive person for that and you're called the healer and here you are sitting at the shore and wanting to give all you can for love and we can see that there is one cup, but there is two that feed it um, above one dove, one bird. But there is another one. See that? That's the central one. It's again the central energy. The central energy that is that core. And then we have the dualities. And that's the Holy Trinity. The one, and then the one on the right and the one on the left. Then on the position of the Magician, you get the Mystical Shaman. And 
that is making you powerful. The knowledge to know that this is all you need to know. Then you go ahead and are inspired to help others. Inspired to go forward into the big cycle. And we have the 38 here. The 3 and the 8 that is above the magician here. You see that? The infinite loop of in and exhale of chaos and order. Not good and bad. There is no good and bad. There is just chaos and order. And so you bringing that love to all 12 zodiac signs, if I calculate that together, it becomes an 11. And 11 is a portal of the one and one of even the high priestess, which is in a way an 11 too, right? It's two lines. It's a two. It's not an 11, but it looks like on the position of the High Priestess comes the Two of Wands. Then you know that the Eleven is bringing you forward into an action. An action that says Mars and Aries is taking on these Two Wands and it's the Lord of Dominion. And you are literally knowing that these two energies are in control of the shaman. You are then a shaman because the magician is a shaman. And you start realizing that in your head and you start realizing that is the power there lies the power. So you will then use the power to create. And when you create, you are the magician and the high priestess as well. Because on the position of the empress comes the sun. That's success. That's pure success. Use that success and give birth to a new type of duality. A duality that comes into the ten, into the one and the zero, into the language of the um, programming. One and zero. One with the magician and zero with the love, with the knowledge that the three is embedded in the ace of cup. Very powerful. So you are giving birth to the central energy, the sun, which is at the core. And the sun is right now in Virgo, in the small cycle. In the small cycle, the sun in Virgo is inviting us to look deep within for the light which she holds in the lantern. They say the star or the sun is in the lantern, but the sun is a dwarf star. And so here it is. You holding or Virgo is holding the light for you and is letting you know, hey, go forward and see that you bring a new awareness to this world. The one and the nine is then creating the ten. The nine is here and the on the position of the magician is the mystical shaman. Then you're using shamanic work to create an awareness, to create something very powerful because the three she holds the secret three in her card. She gives birth. She is fertility. She has all 12 zodiac signs as a crown on her head. And so she is 
powerful and she gives birth to this new knowledge that the sun holds because the sun is neutral the sun is the center of our um, solar system and it's the uh, small cycle it's the small cycle where we the earth is turning around the sun and it's then also the understanding of the wobble of the earth that creates then the age so you create something new a new awareness and on the position of your card comes the lovers the six which is as well then the powerful symbol for the two times three right we have here the three and then here is two times the three it's the triangle it's the hexagram that is giving then power to a couple he holds three and she holds the three within her and so we see three energies you see that here three energies and here three energies the person the inner child and the power animal that is connected with them and here is the um, hermit marrying them the hermit that knows that he is the tantric union within himself he's there so this is a Gemini and on the position of you you searching for this you want this you want true love you want a love that is fulfilling you and somehow you are reaching that goal somehow you finding that goal because then on the position of Virgo comes the Emperor comes the masculine energy of creating something new he holds the three-pointed wand he holds the knowledge of the Empress as a wand the three and so also of the Sun of the power he holds that in his wand and he is saying be innovative don't do what others have done do it your way be completely different than you ever thought of being different now of course Virgo can also say there is an Aries in your life that can bring maybe a union here to you because there is no other zodiac sign of course there is a, a Gemini maybe you want that love with a Gemini on the position of the wheel of fortune comes here this lady who is 28 can you hear me and there is something it's almost like you're saying to the Aries personality can you hear me can you really truly hear me and for some reason he might not hear you he might be too occupied being Aries being wanting and wanting something that is beyond your reach because here's Virgo holding the light for Aries and so you gotta look at that and see that you have to unite that within you don't get something from someone else be this and be this so for some reason she's looking at him she's in facing the small cycle because on the position of Libra next month is here the five of swords I'm gonna leave him here because this is like a story here the five of swords the flower that is cut the five petals something is 
going to be quite intense in the month of Libra. There's going to come Venus in Aquarius. A distraction, a mental mind fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry, but something that makes you feel like, yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear what I'm telling you? Speech, thoughts. No, I'm occupied with what I'm doing here. Well, to get out of it, become this. Become like Aries and allow not to dive too deep into the ocean of emotions, right? Feelings that you hold because you are cancer. You are deep rooted in the waters. You love the water. You are water and water. You have twice water. So, and on the position of your card is the lovers, right? You want so much this, but some reason something is preventing you to have that. Maybe there is this kind of personality that is preventing you to have that. So, there she is. So what are we going to do? <laughs> we look then into the position of the moon comes the number 20 and Feast of Plenty. So apparently you have plenty. Apparently you have everything you need. And here's like a moon. But now it's time to distinguish. And you see these swords. There's more swords. Very interesting. There's two swords behind this moon so now you have seven swords and that's not good the moon is while you're looking deep inside right you're looking deep inside because the moon is now in your sign and so you, the moon is telling you you have everything but for some reason there is something that you don't have there is something that is wanting to come down and so you have five swords that point upwards and you have two swords that come down and it's letting you know there is something that you need to learn in the book i was reading it it says options choices and their consequences life's blessings so for some reason you get an energy coming down that's highlighting even more these and it's saying a great feast is laid out before you and requires you to choose what will satisfy your hunger something new and unconventional with its potential for bitter or savory qualities or something you already know you love so you gotta make a choice here either way with these two swords that add to it. So you have seven of swords, which is also quite a very difficult card. And then on the position of the sun comes here plants and growth, the 19, which is then a 1919 portal, right? And here we had the sun on the position of the empress. So you are learning to find the light within you, not through another, not through a mental weariness, but to grow within your capacity to grow within this difficult situation seven swords seven is the spiritual seven is the crown chakra so there is a crown on top of your head that is light through this animal spirit that is coming to you through the sun so 
understand that the movement here with the sun is then letting you know, okay, see how you can highlight your life, how you can make your life beautiful. Because then on the position of the um, judgment comes or the uh, awakening comes this beautiful card, right? Then you are ready to be in this beautiful garden. Then you're ready to be in reflection. Time to focus, balance, reflect and guide yourself past stumbling blocks to take the right actions. The number 58, which is then a 13 and a 13 is a 4. And the four is here through Aries. So Aries is the one that is creating quite a difficult situation for you. But through this animal you get into a spirit of rethinking these things new. It's almost like the sun has put itself into small little energies. The sun has created sparks, many sparks. There's not just one, there's many sparks. And that created now for you a moment of reflection and you're again looking in this direction. It's almost like she is now being called to turn around, to turn around away from him. See that? So there is something with this Aries. There is something with Aries because, I mean, the two of wands is Aries, right? Is Mars and Aries. It's a very intense energy. Very intense. And then on the position of the world, you get a three, three portal, the 21 calculated together is a three, you get the three of pentacles. Then you create, look at you, you reflect, you have brought yourself into this garden. And remember, it's here the moon, right? The moon that created an understanding of there is something that's not working. And then the sun highlighted things so clearly in your brain that you sat down and you said to yourself, okay, I gotta do this reflection on what's going on in my life. I need to focus, I need to balance, I need to reflect and I need to guide myself past these stumbling blocks, right? It's still coming past these stumbling blocks, this looking like I'm alone, I'm not being heard by this character, by this personality. And you can't because he's a four. So see then that the three of coins are giving you the power to build something completely new, right? The power to move Mars in Aries into Mars in Capricorn at the position of the world. Then the world is yours, then you can create whatever it is you want to create and have the power to make something very strong happen because here you already looked into the two, but this is a dominion. Yeah, dominion doesn't sound so good to me, right? I don't, I don't want to uh, take power over and that's what Aries does. Aries loves this. So observe this Aries character and observe, observe also that there is, I guess, a Gemini who's bringing another awareness to you, more a lovelier energy to you and you looking deep into what love means to you. What does it mean, right? To be fully embraced in this love. 
building something with someone is actually at the core now of your energy. It's at the core of what it is that you want to do because when we put back now the Ace of Cups, you see that the three is in here in the three and makes it then one. When you understand the three, you understand everything and then you can create because the 58 is then again, of course, a 13, a one and a three. The one, the mystical shaman and the three here. And you are understanding everything. You're understanding that you're understanding that in the ace is the three embedded. So build something, create something. And remember the 1010 portal here, 10, 10 to 28, right? Understand that when you calling for someone, like, can you hear me? Then you make yourself weak. Don't do that, right? Become like him and become innovative and allow yourself not to be um, brought into this situation. You don't know that this is coming. So don't listen, don't listen. Don't don't tip, don't find his attention. It's not worth it. Keep turning around and know that yes, this is still coming, but you will see that you will get through that. And so I hope I see you in the next reading because then when the sun is moving into um, Libra, we will look at this. We will look at this energy, the Five of Swords. Until then, I thank you so much for being with me. Namaste.